I've got a bonus for you. If you're gonna get married, please, please, for the love of God, get comfortable with- Hi, my loves. Welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, my name is Anushka. As you can tell from the title, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna do a little chit chat, get ready with me. And I'm gonna talk about the five things that change once you get married. This idea actually came about from my Instagram, which I'll tell you guys about in a bit. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll just jump straight into it. Okay, let's waste no time and get straight into it before i get into the five things i should probably give you some backstory on my ring situation because that's kind of like what drove me to do this video because so many of you were really interested in like marriage in general from my instagram stories so i've been with my husband since i was like 15 16. i'm 28 now so like we've been together for ages so we've been together for 13 ish years and we have been married for four years. We actually recently hit our four year anniversary, which is insane because like I did not see the time fly at all. Obviously, I looked very different four years ago. My body fluctuates like crazy. And during that time, I was at my slimmest. Like I was working out every day. And I miss being like that. I'm not gonna lie, like just the way I felt, I felt super strong. Anyways, that's a whole other topic. Women's bodies change over time and we're expected to wear this ring throughout all of life. I've never seen anyone talk about this issue i have seen people talk about it like when they get pregnant and stuff and obviously their ring gets stuck and sometimes they need to get it cut off or they need to go to a professional and ask them to take it off for them without even talking about being pregnant like your body naturally changes unless you're like just blessed and you don't have to deal with this issue but like when you put on weight like what are you supposed to do get yourself a new ring my fingers are looking like sausages they don't look like it there but they trust me they're looking like sausages especially during the summertime I've been told to actually went to a jeweler because I have like diamonds on my ring. Look, that looks painful. <laughs> Trust me, it's okay now because it's like winter period, but in summer I could not put this on at all because it would get so irritated and swollen. And I went to the jewelers to ask them to size up for me, but because they're like diamonds and stuff, they were like, you cannot, you've gone up, they were like, you've gone up four sizes. You cannot size that much. Like you're gonna have to either get a new ring or like wait till winter. Cause it's, um, it's not unusual for like your fingers to swell up during the um, summer months. And actually some of you said the same thing in my DM. So I know this is a thing. And honestly, I feel so naked without my ring. I know like it doesn't define like our relationship or our marriage, but I just feel complete with my ring. Like I just, I love my ring as well. And I don't want to get rid of it and get a new set. But now I've come to the point where I feel like I need a ring set for my, when I'm skinny and when I'm put on some weight. This is just something I've been dealing with. Like I can like not care and just be like, oh, whatever, I'll just take my ring off. But I don't want to like not wear it. Do you know what I mean? I feel like naked without it. I don't know how to explain, but yeah, this is my ring situation. So right now it's okay, but it's like, what are you supposed to do? I can't even wear my wedding band. I just wear my engagement ring. Like the wedding band, if I put it, it's impossible. Like I, my finger will go purple. I know this is proper first world problems. I shouldn't be complaining, but I'm sure like I'm not the only one that has to struggle with this. And a lot of you, it, it's true because so many of you messaged me back on this situation. I think it's bigger for you to like lose weight and then like your ring is too big because you can get these bands and stuff that you can put in between your skin and the ring and it like it pre prevents it from falling off. But when your ring is too small, that's when it gets harder and you don't really have a choice to be honest because your fingers swell up. You don't even know what can happen in the night if it goes like blue or black. I don't even know. Like with me, I'm at the point where I just need a bit of soap and it will come off, but it's just such a pain. Anyways, this is what started this whole shabackle. So let's jump straight into the actual part of this video. Oh, forget me being pregnant. This can go in the bin. I wouldn't be able to wear it ever again. I don't think so. Okay, now onto the five things that change when you get married. I think I'm only gonna to touch up on the main things and I'm sure a lot of you are gonna relate. First one, your living circumstances. Now this is not the case for everyone. And to be honest, it wasn't really my case because it only happened when like we actually moved out from my mum's. But I know that a lot of people cannot live with their partner until they have gotten married. And that is where like you, you will have to adjust. I think the only way to, I can say to pre prepare you guys for that is if you can maybe go on holidays with your partner or your husband to be and just see like get little glimpses. I mean, if they're gonna be your husband to be, I think it's too late to test the waters in terms of <laughs> living together, but it's gonna be a challenge. It's not for everyone, but it's gonna be a challenge. You're gonna have to like see how this person lives, how clean they are, how they are with laundry. For me personally, I think 80 to 90% of 
living together is fun. And you get that 10% where you're just like, you know, you know. I think a lot of, you know, issues with when you're living together is whether you're, you are living with your in-laws. Major, it's a major factor, okay? And then obviously, you know, chores and cleanliness, cooking, general everyday home stuff, you know? I think those are the two main factors when you have to consider living together. Unless they sleepwalk in at night and you have to go looking for them. That's a separate topic. If you have never lived with your partner and then you're going straight in living with them and with the in-laws, I think that can make it really difficult. The way, like, if you want to order delivery in the middle of the night, I don't know, like midnight, don't necessarily want to do the dishes straight away. Like, you, you want to do it the next day. Or you like your setup in terms of furniture, utensils or whatever. You like it a certain way, but that's not going to necessarily tie in with your in-laws. These are things that you're going to have to adapt. And all I can say is that you're going to have to, and it brings me to my fifth and final point, this bit, it's just, you're going to have to work around it. You're going to have to work together, collaborate. I've just literally put foundation on one of my favorite tops. Why? The other thing that plays a big role is how well you get along with your in-laws because not everyone does, you know, you still have to be quite formal with them. So yeah, you're just gonna have to learn to work around it. And that doesn't mean necessarily like you're gonna have to say yes, 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 yes to everything, but learn how to like, just find a way to best communicate with each other under one household. Make sure like your partner takes on like both sides as well and then you guys can come to an, agree uh, an agreement or just agree to disagree. Another thing is like chores and stuff. Like for us, we we split chores, like some things he'll do and then some things I'll do. And then there are things where we kind of take turns. One thing, for example, like I don't let him touch the laundry because it's so specific and I don't want my clothes ruined. But like he'll do like washes where it's just his clothes sometimes or like, there's some sort of arrangement in place to make sure that not only one person is doing it all and you're going to have to do it because otherwise if you don't do it, you're going to end up doing everything. You don't want to be around me when I've cleaned. I've cleaned and then you come sit where I cleaned and you put crumbs everywhere or you make some sort of mess. Oh, Godzilla will come out. This was not only with my husband, but my siblings as well. Like I would go eight shit i want you to tread on eggshells if i've cleaned no chewing no eating do not touch the cushion don't do you know what don't sit down go outside i'm not gonna sugarcoat it there will be arguments sorry i don't care what anyone says perfect relationship does not exist sorry and when i say that i mean like one where there's it, fights do not exist sorry like that does not exist like do not go by what you see on social media when you see all these perfect little pretty flowery relationships. It's not always like that. It's not gonna be always roses are red, violets are blue. Cause it's gonna, it's gonna look like shit. It's gonna look brown at some point, okay? I remember like, we would get into like the biggest fights because for us it was different different because we were, me and my husband, we were with my mom and my siblings and like we would put stuff in the fridge and things will disappear. Things will disappear, that's what I'm gonna say. So you're just gonna have to like deal with stuff like this. One party is gonna do something that the other party is not gonna necessarily like or agree with and it's gonna cause havoc. You're gonna just have to deal with it. One party has to deal with it or the culprit will either have to just say, I'm not gonna change, deal with it or they'll agree to, you know, change and come to some sort of you know amend like they'll agree to amend the way they're doing things you know don't even get me started on a bathroom situation because oh if you only got one bathroom and in the morning you have to share that one bathroom i will i pray for you honestly sorrows sorrows prayers okay now on to the second point decision making i mean this is not a major one but it's something that you're gonna you're gonna have to change when you get married when you make decisions you can't just do it on the whim by yourself anymore. You're gonna have to sit down with your other half and come to an agreement together. You can't just the next day decide that you wanna to move to Dubai, but not consult your partner first. And with large purchases, like I'll always check with my husband, like, do you think I should get this? Like, do you, do you think I'm not like over exaggerating? Like, I don't know, like, especially for big purchases, you're definitely gonna to have to sit down and talk about it. And this will actually bring me on to my next point. Even when you are deciding whether to go out every day, because you now have a home, like you have someone that you can go home to, you know, if you're out clubbing, I don't even know what you're doing every day, really late at night. When is it that you guys get to spend time together? And sometimes you're gonna to have to sit down together and just agree. I think it will get harder when you have kids 
And I've actually seen, like I watch It's Judy's live vlogs and obviously she has five kids and she's married. And they were saying like they make an effort to at least do like one date a week because it's that hard when you have kids apparently and I, I can't imagine. I can't, I don't even have kids, I come home and I'm tired. And I haven't even worked out yet. You're telling me I have to come home from work, spend time with the kids, squabble around to get them to bed and that is a process. I remember when we were kids, don't, don't lie. Me and my brother, we never wanted to go to bed. So it's like, you're gonna have to make these decisions to make sure that your relationship is put first because if it's not, then it, I don't know, like, I feel like that's when it slowly crumbles, when you're not spending enough time with each other. So that's another part of like the decision making, just, just making sure you're just putting time aside to spend with one another. Okay, the third one is finances. Oh, money. I genuinely think you need to ensure that you can comfortably speak about money with your other half. If you cannot, you need to work on that. You need to work on that, okay? But not like just be able to talk about it, but also to be able to come to agreement on certain things. Me and my husband, we've been together for so long that like our money, like there's no your money, my money. Like it's just, we refer to, we, when we talk about money, it's like, it's like, it's our imaginary one pot. We don't have a joint account. I know some people do, because maybe it'll be easier for some things, I don't know. But like, even though we have our own bank accounts, like we still have this imaginary one pot. That's how we talk, that's how we talk and view money. Like there's no yours or mine, there's just this. But if it's like Christmas season or birthdays, we make sure not to look at each other's accounts because you know, we don't want to be spoiling any surprises. But other than that, like, I just think you need to be able just be able to freely speak about money. Don't let it be a taboo subject in your household, please. And if things are getting tight, don't be afraid to confront one another. Like, do you know what? Because we all want to be in the end. The end goal is for us to be comfortable and get into that position where you're financially stable or financially free even. So the end goal is the same. So if there's something that's affecting that, don't be afraid to challenge it, you know? But yeah, that's all I can say. That's the number one tip. Be comfortable with um, talking about money. One thing that will change when you get married is your patience will be tested. Yes, it will. I know I'm saying this in a joking way, but it will be tested. Like your, your, your patience will be tested. I think over time, I've learned not to raise my voice. That's something that I'm really pleased on. Like I stay calm now. And like, if I have an issue, I'm just gonna voice that issue. I will just have to sit down if need be. But your patience will be tested. Like if I see a sock on the floor, do you know what? It's not even a big deal. I could be having a shit day that day and I see that sock on the floor. It will, that's it. That's all that, that's all that was needed. I think this will become worse when you have kids. <laughs> like it's just the amount of couples that with kids that I see, like especially when we're sh out food shopping. <gasps> there are couples, they cannot stand each other. And I completely understand it. I come I understand so yeah you this is just me saying I don't know how to fix it all I can say is just try and breathe breathe count to 10 and just think by yelling or throwing a fit it's not going to get you anywhere so it's just like this is if you have kids I don't know like there are some there are some times where you're just like that's the feeling you get and I can't explain it but you will get that when you're married I don't know what it'll be about I can't think like any what is this? Like it could be something as small as him cutting and like cutting on a plate and it's making too much noise. I did it to him once, apparently I was chewing so loudly and that's a pet peeve of mine, but he was just looking at me, he's like, oh, why are you chewing so loudly? Like it's just these little things that are gonna test your patience and I'm here to tell you that it's okay, it's normal. The fifth and final one that I think is really important and honestly, it kind of slightly links to all the points I mentioned in some way. And that is learning to compromise. I was speaking to someone who's been married for, I don't even know how many years, 20 plus years. And one of their biggest advice was learning to compromise. And I think nowadays people just want to give up really quickly when things don't kind of like go to plan or when things get a little bit hard and they don't try to like work for it. I mean, that's very subjective, like it depends what it is. But yeah, like if you 
Like it's not, like I said, it's not gonna always be fairy dust and sparkles. Like it's gonna get hard sometimes and you're gonna have to learn how to compromise. And in some, I mean, not in all cases, it's, maybe it'll just be from one one person and not both of you, or maybe sometimes both of you. I think it was J. Cole. I think it was a rapper. A lot of people seem to think that that kind of like lust phase that you get in that first year of your relationship. People seem to think that that's what it's gonna be like throughout the rest of your relationship and for the years to come. But when you hit that two to five year mark, things can kind of get, it's like that kind of lust feeling goes away. And like this person said, you're gonna have to find new ways of loving this person that you have committed to. Because people change as well throughout the relationship and you're gonna have, you, go, you guys are gonna evolve together and you won't always see eye to eye and it's not always gonna be easy and you're gonna have to push through it and there will be bumps along the way. But it's just so nice to experience all these things and grow together with that with your person. I think even like Michelle Obama was just saying, I think she said in an interview, like at some point she wanted to like murder her husband. And we're talking about Obama here. And you're gonna have to put the effort in to make sure, just like, not get too comfortable. I, do you know what, at some point I was getting too comfortable. Like, I look like a mushroom every day. Now I like try to, like just the little things and like just putting some makeup and making yourself look pretty and like, going out to the cinema for a day. Even like the other day we went to Ikea and it, we just had a walk around. Like it's in the little things. It's in the little things which will help you along the way. And you're gonna have to do and try different things to change things up because you've spent so many years with this person. Like you can easily like get, you can easily get frustrated at one another to, like all the time. But yeah, compromise is a big one. Working through hurdles is a big one. And just keep it in mind because that first excited excited feeling that you get in the beginning only lasts until like a certain point and then yeah you're just gonna have to find new ways to love one another as you guys grow old and evolve together and trust me guys i've spoken to a few people that have been married for years and years and this last point that i've just made was always one that something that they would mention honestly i would love to hear you guys is like personal experiences like do you agree with some of the points i've made mentioned do you disagree with some obviously i'm do not think that i'm any like think that i'm some sort of married counselor i'm not i'm just speaking off of experiences and like conversations that i've had with also other people it honestly just feels like i'm just sat down speaking to my friends when i do these kind of videos i did actually get a bunch of questions on my insta stories oh my god one is how do you make up after an argument I find it hard to say sorry. Oh, trust me, I think we do too. We tend to just take space ap apart from each other. Like we literally, we will take a break from one another and won't talk to each other for like a day or two. That's like major arguments. Or sometimes we'll just stay silent like and not talk to each other for like a few hours, take a breather and then like talk about it. And then we'll just make up. The word sorry does not appear anywhere. <laughs> But we silently acknowledge who went wrong where, we talk for it and we just move on. And also say like going forward, blah, blah, blah. Do you know, don't necessarily always have to say the word sorry. I mean, it's good, but just take time from one another. I think everyone will be different, but t maybe take time from one another. Think about it, get your thoughts, collaborate your, your points of argument, I will say, and where you, maybe felt hurt and then also also try to find ways that would what the other person could do to prevent that happening again don't just always point the finger accuse 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 also try to find solutions for it to not happen again and again you're just gonna have to communicate with that one another like you're gonna have to sit down and talk about it i'm getting married next year how do i how to not invade his personal space i'm sorry to say honey but if you're getting married there is no more his personal space, unless he has a man cave, okay? If it's you guys' bedroom, he's gonna make space for you. You shouldn't feel like you're invading his space at all. Like he'll, he should be making you feel comfortable and making, you know, I don't know, something simple as emptying some drawers for you or something like that, you know? And you're gonna get married. That space is for both of you now. Don't go in with the mindset of that you're invading his space. Like, like I said, it's your, you guys' space. Like. 
it's a it's collaborative it's a we now and if it's truly something that's bugging you just sit down and talk to him about it do you plan to have kids in the future obviously i'm quite open i don't mind this question but just bear in mind like some people get super offended or this can be a very sensitive topic for some so you don't want to be always going around asking i know like you mean it it's like i know most people mean it in such a like innocent way but this question can be so triggering for some but anyways i don't mind and yes i do want to have kids in the future this question came up so much you guys you guys need filters okay because the reason why i say this is you don't know if someone's been struggling to have a kid like they've been struggling for years and it's just not working out for them and then you get someone asking them do you want to have kids like that's so that can be so triggering for them so just bear that in mind when you ask that question to people. I don't ask it unless the person has insinuated or like has opened up the table to, to, to ask that question. If not, I will never ask that question to someone. Is your family quite traditional as in did you have to get married at quite early? I, mine wasn't and obviously there was just my mum. So yeah, we did, we were already living together before we got married. So my situation is, can be very different to other people out there where they can only move out once they've gotten married. How are you finding marriage? Was it the same as when you were dating? Honestly, I get this question a lot, especially when I got married. So many people ask me like, what changed? But honestly, because like I said, we were already living together, not much changed, except for that feeling of being one unit. That's what really changed for us. Like we were married, like we were one now. How do you keep your marriage alive and still have that spark? Like I said, try to make time for dates. Do small acts of kindness. Like I randomly got my hobbies like some Yeezys and it made him so happy because it was so out of the blue. He would do something like so innocent. Like I came home and he washed all my makeup brushes. Like my makeup brushes. I ha Do you guys understand how many makeup brushes I have? It's just the sweetest thing. So it's just like these small uh, random acts of kindness. Also learn your partner's love language. How do you make decisions together when your initial opinions are different? This is where the compromise point comes in. If you don't agree, agree to disagree and come to a conclusion. Like, otherwise you're not gonna be able to move forward. If that means an hours and hours of conversation time, then let it be. Like, you're just gonna have to come to some sort of agreement. There are so many questions, but I think that sums most of the main ones. And yeah, I think that's it for me, guys. And that's my makeup done. This was so fun to chat with you guys on such a topic sometimes i feel like oh i'm so young i shouldn't be talking about it but so many of you requested it so i was just like do you know what i'm gonna just talk based on my experiences alone and and if you want i've got a bonus i've got a bonus for you if you're gonna get married please please for the love of god get comfortable with fighting in front of each other from the get-go okay please we want to avoid ibs stomach pains from like holding yourself in like just get comfortable with it. Just let it out. Do it. Just do it. Once you're able to fart in front of each other, especially the girl, you guys will be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. All right. Well, that's it from today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please do let me know your experiences, what you agree with, what you don't agree with. I would love to know. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you can join the family. Give this video a like and I will see you in my next video. And also, let me know what other topics you want to see next. Anyways, I'll see you guys. Bye.